For those of you who do not live in a developed nation, this is a stove, specifically an electric range. This is a 1986 Kenmore that I believe was manufactured by General Electric. This is actually the original stove to my house and um, is almost like new. In fact, it's the cleanest stove I have ever seen. And it was like that when I moved in. Um, so, I never made any plans on replacing it. And uh, since it's an electric stove, I pictured it would serve a very long and prosperous life cooking food for me. And so far, it's done quite well. But one thing that's always bothered me about this oven is that the oven takes a little bit longer to cook than most ovens that I've used in the past. Well, I finally decided to break down and buy an oven thermometer. This is an oven thermometer. And when you buy an oven thermometer, make sure it has the NSF logo. That basically means that the thermometer is manufactured to standards that could be used in the food service industry. Oh yes, back to the oven. So, essentially, I figured out, after running some tests, that the oven's temperature was 50 degrees lower than what the dial stated. And I remembered from when I had removed the um, control knobs in the past that the oven knob has a little adjustment on the back of it that allows you to rotate the indicator dial in relation to the actual switch setting. So you can essentially calibrate your own oven. It's pretty simple. So what you have to do is basically stick the thermometer in the oven and turn it to your desired temperature. In my case it was 350. And I would use 350 as a guideline anyway. Because after all, most foods are cooked at 350. Most frozen foods anyway. So I leave it at 350 for approximately 15 to 20 minutes. I think it's more like 15 to 30 minutes, to be honest with you. Actually, I'm sorry, 20 to 30 minutes. And that allows everything in the oven to stabilize temperature-wise. Once it reaches 350 degrees on the... Um, I'm sorry, once the thermometer stops rising, you can then readjust your, your um, control knob, um, whatever the difference is in temperature. So if it's set to 350, desired 350, and you are reading 300 degrees, as I was, on the thermostat, or thermometer, sorry, um, you can then take the knob off and adjust it back 50 degrees. To compensate and then you're going to readjust the thermostat to 350 wait another 15 20 minutes see how the temperature stabilizes and then adjust it from there and that's how I was able to perfectly calibrate my oven it is now perfectly accurate and does a very fine job in cooking food the same thing can be done with your refrigerator they actually sell thermometers specifically made for refrigerators they look like this. This is a Taylor refrigerator thermometer. And as you can clearly see, my fridge is running at about 30, 31, 32 degrees Fahrenheit, which is okay. You want it below 40. In fact, 32 is a, a little bit on the low side. Um, then, as many of you already know, you can adjust the thermostat on the fridge by rotating this knob back or forward. Right now it's set to the middle position, which is the factory suggested position for the refrigerator. Same thing can be done with the freezer. This is actually a point in the back there. And there is a knob that you can rotate. For some reason, Refrigerator manufacturers have decided, at least on their lower end models, not to include dials that actually set specified temperatures. They're more of a high or low setting. But that's how you can verify that your food is being stored at the proper temperature, not too cold, not too hot. You, don't want your free you do not want your refrigerator to freeze anything. 
And if you set it too low or too cold, it actually can freeze uh, perishables, um, fruits, vegetables, um, water, milk, whatever. Things that you really don't want to freeze. And the same thing with a freezer. If it's too high or set to a, a higher temperature, your food won't melt. Your food won't freeze. You know what I mean. And uh, consequently, if the freezer is set too low, you're actually wasting energy. So always verify your appliance temperatures with a thermometer. It can save you a lot of energy and a lot of aggravation. Now let's go on a little bit of a rant about appliances. What's the first thing people do when they buy a house? They replace the appliances in many cases. If the appliances are outdated, old, or shabby looking, the first thing people do is replace them with brand new shiny appliances. With faux or even real stainless steel. Ooh. But what they don't realize is that in many cases they're replacing appliances that may be a few years old, but can definitely last decades long, decades more. In the case of this oven, it's in such good condition, why would I replace it? Luckily mine's not avocado green or harvest gold, it's a neutral white. So it can be, it actually accompanies the cabinets, the fridge, and the dishwasher quite well. I, I actually stayed with white. I couldn't find almond, which is technically what this color really is. I couldn't find an almond fridge, so I just stuck with a white one. But back to my point. These older appliances, especially these old electric stoves, were built to last forever. In fact, this stove will probably outlast me. <laughs> I swear. It's 25, 26 years old, and it looks just like it did the day it was built. And to the point where I was able to clean the oven almost to as new condition. Didn't take long either. I imagine that this stove wasn't used very much um, in the past. Um, <clears throat> and I just made some pasta, uh, like a baked pasta dish, and unfortunately this, this uh, door was perfectly spotless you know, a couple hours ago, and I'm going to have to clean that yet again. But it may not be the most efficient stove in the world. I mean, I'm sure it's not Energy Star rated. In fact, it was made prior to Energy Star. But it works. And to me, an appliance that works properly is worth more than an appliance that uses more energy, less energy. Which brings me to my next point stupid fridge. I bought the fridge when I bought the condo five years ago. After five years, the compressor relay blew up. Really? Five years? Come on. The original fridge in this condo lasted approximately 20 years. Um, and the one next door to me on both sides still have the original refrigerators from 26 years ago. This thing died after five years. Now, it only cost $30 to fix, but that's besides the point. In my opinion, an appliance should give you at least 10 years of trouble-free service. But sadly, the manufacturers don't agree with me. No, instead, we live in the throwaway Walmart world, and, well, things just aren't supposed to last more than five years, apparently. Even this dishwasher is original, and it still runs perfectly like the day it was built. Not a thing wrong with it. The only thing wrong with this dishwasher, I should, I should rephrase that, is that the racks are starting to rust. And when they do, I'll try to find new racks. Problem solved. In fact, I know exactly where I can get them. I'll do one at a time. They're like 60 bucks a piece. I'll put new racks in it. And when the seal fails, I'll put a new seal on it. I'm not replacing that dishwasher under any circumstances. Because if I had replaced that dishwasher five years ago, Today, I'd be out shopping for a new dishwasher. Come on, you know? Things are not built like they used to be. I mean, this stove is, like, dead simple. It's electric. As long as the burners don't burn out and the thermostat works, it'll run forever. And uh, as long as it's kept clean, maintained, and free of defects, 
And look at that. That is isn't that clean or what? There's a little bit of corrosion on this um, on this galvanized steel front panel, but that's nothing. I mean, if I really wanted to, I could take it out and sand it and clean it up and make it look all pretty again. But I mean, realistically, why why bother? <laughs> I mean, look at the labels. They're still fully intact. Not a single thing wrong with the stove. But many people, they buy, they buy condos, they buy houses, and the first thing they do is replace good old-fashioned appliances like this that will seriously outlive the building they're placed in. That's the first thing they do. And a lot of that is because styles change. But you know, if you wait long enough, if it's out of style today, it'll be back in style in 10 to 15 years, guaranteed. I mean, these cabinets, I mean, they're really not that out of style. I mean, actually, they made these cabinets up until the mid-1990s, and I know where you can still buy them, custom-made. They're melamine cabinets. They're easy to clean. They're practical. The first thing the next homeowner will probably do when I sell this condo, whenever I sell this condo, is replace these good old-fashioned reliable melamine cabinets that can be cleaned in a second because the surface is hard to scratch and doesn't absorb stains. They're going to replace them with particle board faced cabinets. I guarantee it. They'll be particle board with cheap oak trim, really crappy, and they're just going to fall apart after five years. These are 26 years old. And look at this vent hood. Original vent hood, Kenmore. In beautiful condition. No rust, no grease, no splatters. I mean, even the corners are clean. <laughs> it's like it was installed yesterday. All because the previous homeowner actually took care of the place and made sure to clean things when they were dirty or never use the stove, one or the other. Even this filter, <laughs> while we're talking about that. Ooh, oops, I did not mean to do that. And that is one way to break a light cover. Luckily, it's not broken. But anyway, <laughs> even the filters are original. Um, look at this, never been replaced. I know this hasn't been replaced because the one next door to me is the exact same filter, same manufacturer and everything. Oh, look. Yeah, brawn manufacturing. <laughs> Funny. Didn't mean to drop that and scare myself, but... One way to clean the, the dead flies from the light fixture cover. The only thing that ever went wrong with this uh, vent hood was the original light fixture cover um, started to crystallize and it fell apart on me. And uh, I had to replace it. I replaced it when the neighbor put in a new vent hood because his, he was remodeling his kitchen and he decided he didn't want the old one anymore, so gave me the cover for it. Sometimes things like that work out. When people, are get, when people get stupid and replace things unnecessarily, other people benefit. All right, there we go. So anyway, um, you know, these old appliances were just built to withstand the test of time. In fact, they actually weren't, which is funny. Um, it just it worked out that way. But yeah, the dishwasher, as long as the tub is still intact, as long as it's still complete, the door is not rusting out, it'll run forever. And that seal has never been replaced. Still doesn't leak. Knock on wood. And it's so simple, too. It just has two settings, hot, dry, or no dry. Simple. Simple timer. No fancy buttons. My parents' refrigerator, um, <clears throat> which was only about seven years old, completely failed. They've gone through three stoves in 15 years um, for major repairs, and they've ended up replacing the entire stove. Um, I can't tell you how many dishwashers they've gone through. Or actually, um, my coworker, ironically, just replaced a dishwasher because um, the control timer, the control board completely blew up on him. And the manufacturer wanted some ridiculous amount of money for the same part that was going to fail again three years later. 
but sometimes these old-fashioned dials just a simple timer all it is is a small electric motor that rotates that switch in predefined intervals sometimes simple things like that just simply work and it's even a power miser model Ooh. all that means is that it has a cool dry function that's all <laughs> couldn't be simpler God only knows how long this microwave is going to last me. My grandparents had one microwave from 1982 until 2001. One microwave. I've blown up two of them. I bought a uh, fairly mid-priced sharp carousel. And uh, that was when I first moved out on my own when I was, I was 18, 19, when I moved out of my parents' house. Bought my first microwave. It was a sharp carousel. The damn thing only lasted about six months. Six months. Then I replaced it with a beautiful $100, the most expensive micro microwave Walmart sold. Cost me $99, I think it was. It was a Panasonic inverter model. That thing lasted me up until about, I think it was from 2005 until roughly, I think it blew up in 2009. And that's when I bought this one. I paid more for this GE than I did for the Panasonic. And this is a smaller microwave, but it's a better quality one, I think. So far, I don't really use it. I don't really use the microwave much for anything, so so far it still works, but it's cheap, but it works. And no, I didn't buy the uh, the hanging kit. Instead, I decided to buy nothing, and I made my own mounting kit. What I did was I unscrewed the uh, cover. I moved the fridge out of the way. I unscrewed the cover from the front and back, or sides and back. I mounted the cover using some wooden shims, screwed it right to the bottom of the cabinet, and then I reassembled the microwave. I jacked it up and blocked it up on some books and stuff, and screwed it back together. That simple. You don't have to buy the damn mounting kit. They have a mounting kit for these. It costs like 150 bucks or something. <laughs> it's ridiculous. And even gives me a spot for the manual. None of the vents are blocked. Oh yes, there is the owner's manual. Oh, well, there's a receipt in there too. How much did I pay for this thing? Is that the receipt? I think it is. Let's see here. I bought it at Lowe's. I bought all kinds of stuff there. And it cost me $69.98. That's what I paid for it. It's not bad. And I bought it on July 4th, 2009. No, 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 no. Um, I'm, I don't recall buying it on the 4th of July. I don't know how that would be even possible. Well, 7409. All right. But there you go. Stick that right back up there. Here's another cool gadget I just picked up too, speaking of temperature ratings. This is a Radio Shack infrared thermometer. Basically pointed at anything and it tells you what the temperature is. Pretty cool. Let's go ahead and use it on a few things. I was curious to see if this thermometer was accurate. This is an Eastman Kodak thermometer from probably the 1920s. It says 69 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, now if I aim this at the thermometer, I get 68.5, 67.5. If I hold the button down, it actually dynamically changes instantly. So that tells me that this thermometer is pretty much dead on within one degree. Now, how about this fish tank thermometer? 
It says 74. Hi, Leela. Okay, my thermometer tells me 73. 72 to 73 degrees. It's even waterproof. Let's see if I want to figure out what the um, temperature of Leela is. It should let me. Okay, according to the thermometer, Leela is 79 degrees Fahrenheit. Whereas Nibbler is 78.5. This log is 77.5. Nibbler wants to eat the thermometer. Don't eat my thermometer. Alright. Pretty cool. Now let's see if the furnace thermostat is accurate. 68 degrees. I'm getting 73. Okay. We should probably wash it off first. Because it's not 72. I bet the water is throwing it off. Okay. Let's see if that makes a difference. I'm getting 61, 62, uh, so obviously the water is throwing, I should dry it off first.